the Levi Civita symbol that is actually an isotropic uh, tensor of rank 3, which is also a pseudo tensor. We have been discussing about pseudo tensors. This one, the Levi Civita symbol, that is actually a pseudo tensor. Okay, this symbol is defined by epsilon 1, 2, 3, you know, epsilon i, j, k, this is the symbol used uh, to symbolize Levi Civita. Uh, the epsilon 1, 2, 3, epsilon 2, 3, 1, epsilon 3, 1, 2. So see, after 1 comes 2, then 3. Here, after 2 comes, begins with 2, then comes 3, then 1. Begins with 3, then 1, 2. Its so value is uh, uh, 1. The epsilon 1, 3, 2. This is this this you get by interchanging 2 and 3. So 1, 3, 2. Here you interchange 3 and 1, you get 1, 3. So epsilon 2, 1, 3. Epsilon 3, 2, 1. That is equal to minus 1. All other uh, epsilon i, j, k, that is equal to 0. So this is uh, the property of the Levi Civita symbol. Uh, these are the, you know, the values and if any index repeats, that is uh, if you have epsilon 1, 2, 1, that is equal to 0 or epsilon 2, 2, 3, that will be equal to 0. Epsilon 1, 3, 3, that will be equal to 0. So anything repeats, that will be equal to 0. Okay. Now for any uh, matrix A, we have an important property. For any matrix A, uh, it can be rotation matrix or a reflection matrix or an inversion matrix. For any matrix A, epsilon i, j, k satisfies this. What is it? Epsilon i, j, k. Uh, which is, uh, this is uh, the determinant of the matrix and A, I, P, J, Q, Q, A, K, R, Epsilon, P, Q, R. Okay. Uh, so, one can say Epsilon, P, Q, R is the Levi Civita symbol in the, you no know, original coordinate system and Epsilon, I, J, K in a transformed coordinate system. And the transformation, kind of transformation here. Uh, here, this is uh, the de determinant A and AIP, AJQ, AKR. Since uh, the P is repeating, we have to sum over that. Since Q is repeating, we have to sum over that. Since R is repeating, we have to sum over R. Okay. So, for any matrix, this equation satisfies. That means uh, this is epsilon IJK is a pseudo tensor because this is the transformation that applies to a pseudo tensor. Okay, A is a transformation matrix. Okay, so this shows so epsilon i j k, which is uh, epsilon prime i j k. We can say, yeah, you know, it's a transformed unit system that satisfies this for any matrix. This shows epsilon i j k is an isotropic tensor because this transformation applies to tensor, isotropic tensor. Isotropic means uh, it has the same components in all rotated Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, it has same components whether it is uh, in the original coordinate system or in the transformed coordinate system. <clears throat> the magnitude or the uh, value of epsilon and jk same that's 1, minus 1 or 0 depending upon the indices. Okay. Now we can define dual tenses. Dual tenses. What are dual tenses? With any anti-symmetric second rank tensor in three dimensional space. Okay, anti-symmetric, we know what is meant by the anti-symmetric uh, tensor, second rank tensor. Okay, well, second rank tensor means two indices 
in three dimensional space that means uh, we have nine components we can associate a dual pseudo vector a vector dual uh, to this uh, and which is defined by what ci equal to half epsilon i j k c j k ci is half epsilon i j k c j k okay so uh, it's something uh, like this the anti symmetric tensor so we know uh, c is an anti symmetric tensor you can re represent it like this the diagonals have to be zero and uh, you know if this is c12 the c21 will be minus c12 then only it, it will become anti symmetric you know a kind of uh, anti symmetric means c uh, that is equal to minus c transpose this is the anti symmetric property okay so for that uh, this has to be uh, satisfied uh, and we take uh, if if i take this as minus c31 this has to be c31 okay uh, similarly if this is to be 23 this has to be minus c23 okay so when we look at this this tensor the nine components of tensor is formed using only three components c12 is there c23 is there c31 is there so using these three we have formed this so uh, the c1 c2 c3 uh, you know if you take the vector if for a vector in a three dimensional space we know it has three components a1 a2 a3 these are the three components like that for a uh, vector c it has three components c1 c2 c3 and we are taking it as c23 c31 c12 so using c23 c31 and c12 Uh, which are uh, you know c1 c2 and c3 we can form a vector okay and c1 is uh, half uh, we can form a vector like this and uh, mm, see this this is an example uh, we had uh, defined here the ci as equal to half epsilon i j k c j k so what we have to do is we have to sum over j and k because j and k are re repeating okay even though summation symbol is not here we follow einstein summation convention if a, if an index repeats we have to sum over that index so we have to sum over j and sum over k uh, j and k both take values 1 2 3 okay so uh, c1 is given by half epsilon 1 2 3 c2 3 and uh, c uh, you know uh, then half epsilon 1 3 2 c3 2 see what happened to other uh, elements all of them are zero because the index is repeating we we have to take only uh, those for which the index is not repeating so here the repeat this is not repeating here the index is not repeating all other indices or or all of other terms the indices will be repeating so they will become zero and epsilon 1 2 3 we know that is 1 its value is 1 and epsilon 1 3 2 is minus 1 so uh, we have half c2 3 half uh, minus 1 c2 3 okay but c2 3 uh, we know is minus um, you know this is uh, basically c3 2 okay this is uh, basically c32 that is minus c23 because anti symmetric and these two minus cancel and we have the c23 so we get c1 as equal to c23 same way we can show c2 as equal to c31 uh, and uh, c3 as equal to c12 so uh, a, any any uh, anti symmetric second rank tensor 
can be represented by a pseudo vector. Why it's called pseudo vector? Because uh, you know this epsilon i j k is a pseudo tensor. Epsilon i j k is a pseudo tensor. So we have a pseudo vector here. So any uh, anti-symmetric second rank tensor, uh, we can associate a dual pseudo vector. Okay, so that is uh, shown here. Uh, and uh, now we have the irreducible tensors. So this is all about the dual tensors. Then we have the irreducible tensor. What it says is, a general second rank tensor is uh, reducible. A general second rank tensor is reducible, which means that it, c it can be uh, decomposed into parts of lower tenses, lower tensor ranks. Okay, it's reducible. So we have a uh, second rank tensor and it can be reduced into tenses of lower ranks, tensor of rank 1 or tensor of rank 0, like that. So how it is done? We, we are taking a second rank tensor, so it will have, you know, 9 components. And we are taking sigma i a i i. Oh, okay, sigma i a i. That means we are taking the trees or the sum of the diagonal elements. So that is equal to a11 plus a22 plus uh, a33, which is a, say, scalar quantity. We are taking the sum of the diagonal elements. Okay, and uh, uh, it's a tensor of rank 0. Okay, the scalar says you know, we are taking the sum of the diagonal elements and uh, we are taking it as equal to A, it's a um, scalar quantity. Then we, we take the anti symmetric portion from any, uh, we know, um, any second rank tensor can be written as sum of symmetric and uh, anti symmetric. So that we have already seen. Any second rank tensor can be written as a sum of symmetric and antisymmetric tensor. So the antisymmetric portion is just this. What is it? Half Aij minus Aji. Aij minus Aji. Okay. And we have now just shown that uh, uh, it is equivalent to a pseudo vector. So this anti-symmetric, any anti-symmetric tensor has a dual, an associated dual vector, and that is CK. So BIJ can be written as CK, a pseudo vector, or a tensor of rank 1. Okay. So by subtracting the scalar A, the tensor of rank 0, and the vector CK, from our original tensor, from our original tensor, we subtract this. We have an irreducible symmetric zero trees second rank tensor. So what we do, we subtract Aij, that is the uh, co component of the tensor. From that we subtract Ck and we also subtract 1 by 3 A delta Ij. Okay. And uh, um, Aij is here, Ck that is half Aij minus Aji. Aij minus Aj, this is the anti-symmetric part in Ck and here 1 by 3 a delta ij and as we combine this we have half a i j plus a j i half a i j plus a j i minus 1 by 3 delta i j okay so this is s i j and this is a uh, you know kind of uh, irreducible symmetry why it becomes symmetric because its anti symmetric part has been subtracted removed from it and zero trees. Why is zero trees? Because you know uh, the trees has been subtracted out of it. Okay. So we have this, and also it is uh, you know um, zero trees. You know we can very easily get. We take s one one plus s two two plus s three three. Let's take that. You will be getting. Uh, a minus a that is equal to zero. So that means it is a zero trace. Okay. Then uh, 
uh, we have got an uh, irreducible tensor. Our original uh, uh, tensor that can be written as Aij equal to half, uh, sorry, 1 by third of A delta Ij Ck uh, plus uh, delta Ij. We can write like that. From this, from this uh, we can write what Aij is Sij plus Ck plus 1 by 3 delta Ij. Okay, so this is the idea of the irreducible tensor. So how do you form an irreducible tensor by subtracting the, uh, you know, the trace and uh, the uh, symmetric part? We have an irreducible tensor.